Hi all, today I am talking about a fossil pteridophyte, Rhinia, R-H-Y-N-I-A, Rhinia. The systematic position is division, Xylophyta, class, Xylophytopsida, order, Xylophytales, family, Rhiniaceae and the genus is Rhinia. It was discovered by Kitson and Lang in 1917 from the Rhiny Kurt situated in northern Scotland. That is, it is obtained from or discovered from Rhiny Kurt situated in northern Scotland. A Kurt is a rock consisting of fine particles of silica. Such a rock is situated in the place Rhiny. So, the plant is given with the name Rhiny, that is Rhinia. It is a petrified specimen. That is, during fossilization, when the organic material present in the organism is completely replaced with minerals such as silica and iron. Such materials are known as petrified specimens and the process is known as petrifaction. The plant Rhinia dates back to 400 million years ago that is coming under Devonian period. Now there are two types of plants that is there are two species discovered under the Rhinia. They are Rhinia major and Rhinia guinea vogeni. The Rhinia major is quite larger in size that is it is having 40 to 50 centimeters in height but Rhinia guinea vogeni is having only 20 centimeters in height. Here you can see both the plants and both of them are having a rhizome. Here also it is having a rhizome a stem this is the aerial shoot here also plant is having an aerial shoot and uh, these red colored conical structures are the sporangia that is the plant car carries a rhizome an aerial shoot and a sporangia here the sporangia in both the cases are terminal in position and are solitary that is singly occupied the rhizome is prostrate. It is having the rhizoids. These are the rhizoids. Some of the rhizome turn upward forming the aerial shoot. The aerial shoot is dichotomously branched. In both the cases you can see dichotomously branched aerial shoot. The main difference between the Rhinia major and Rhinia guinea vogeni is in the case of Rhinia major the shoot is smooth but in the case of Rhinia guinea vogeni here you can see small adventitious branches these are the small adventitious branches because of the presence of small adventitious branches the plant is rough in appearance. In the case of sporangia, the sporangia of Rhinia major is 12 centimeter, millimeters in length, 12 millimeters in length and 4 millimeter in width. In the case of Rhinia major. But in the case of Rhinia guinea vogeni, it is having 4 millimeters in length and 1 millimeter in width. This is all about the morphological features of the plant Rhinia. Here, Rhinia is having only two species that is Rhinia major and Rhinia guinea vogeni. 
Now, coming on to the internal structure, both the rhizome and the aerial shoot is having similar kind of internal structure. That is, it is having a central haplosteel. This is the haplosteel. That is, the central portion is occupied by the xylem and the xylem in turn is surrounded by phloem. Here, the xylem core is smooth. Xylem core is smooth. So, the steel is known as haplosteel. So, in the case of Rhinia, it is having a centrally occupied haplosteel and just outer to the haplosteel is the cortex. The cortex is differentiated into outer cortex and an inner cortex. The inner cortex consists of loosely packed cells. Here you can see the loosely packed cells with the intercellular spaces. But the outer cortex is having two to three layer of cells which are compactly arranged. The outermost layer is the epidermis which is covered by thick layer of cuticle and it carries single layered compactly arranged cells. The continuity of the epidermis is interrupted through the stomata. The stomata is seen only in the case of stem. The stomata is totally absent in the rhizome. Now, the reproductive structure. The reproductive structure is represented by the sporangia. Sporangia. Sporangia is terminal in position and are solitary. The sporangia is conical in shape or slightly oval in shape. It carries three layers. That is an outer layer. This is the outer layer. Inner to the outer layer is a middle layer. Middle layer. But uh, the middle layer consists of three cell layer in thickness. Inner to the middle layer is the nutritive tissue, the tepitum. The central region is occupied by the spores, central region of the sporangium is occupied by the spores. The spores are tetrahedral in shape. That is, four spores are grouped into a tetrahedron. So, the plant is considered as sporophytic due to the presence of the tetrahedron spores. This is all about the reproductive structure in the case of Rhinia. Thank you all.